which brings our event to its closing moments and gives me great pleasure to invite the person who brought it all together onto stage, Mr. Rupert Whitehead. Thank you, Rupert. And some closing words? Well, thank you, everybody. I mean, uh, when we were first putting this event together, um, I was trying to think about how we could squeeze the Google world for developers or games developers into one single day. And, um, you know, we've had a really crammed day, but I don't think we've actually managed to cover everything. So we haven't touched Chromecast. We haven't touched the web as much as we could have done. And uh, there have just been hints about some of these other things around the edges. It's a big world, but it's a really exciting place. So in terms of what I wanted people to get out of this, First of all, it's understanding a little bit more about where Google plays in this space. So what is it that we're doing that makes us relevant and will help you in your world as games developers? So I hope you've got more of an idea of that now. Um, the second thing is, as we've dived into the details of things like AdMob, things like Google+, things like the game play, Games Play services, you can see how that is going to add concrete value to your studios as well. And I hope also you've got the chance to meet some really interesting people and chatted to them in the break. So um, if you've ticked all of those three things, I think we've done pretty well today. Now, it's actually kind of an exciting time in Google because there's stuff that's being announced all the time. And literally at this minute, there's breaking news coming from uh, San Francisco. Uh, we've got a, a big cloud event that's running there. And Urs, who heads up our infrastructure, uh, that runs all of our uh, Google services is, uh, is making a big announcement about cloud. And um, he's, he's making an announcement on a number of different points. So I haven't been able to share slides with you on this, but I wanted to give you some of the headlines so you can go away, think about that, and, uh, uh, and, and take that with you. I mean, the first big change is around price. So in Google, we're a little bit concerned in the sense that you've got Moore's Law, and that's creating uh, an erosion of price on hardware, but you're not necessarily getting those price reductions uh, in the erosion of price on hardware that gets translated to you as a cloud customer. So the first big thing that we're actually uh, offering is a 32% price drop in Compute Engine, a 30% drop uh, for App Engine, a 68% drop for Cloud Storage, which is pretty massive, and a, a huge 85% cut for BigQuery, which uh, we believe is about 75% cheaper than any other alternative. So we're expecting this to have a significant impact on the, uh, on the cloud landscape as well. So uh, all of you will have uh, with you so, some uh, app credits as well, or so cloud credits that you, you got in those little notepads. So uh, use those, explore the, explore the cloud platform, and get to know it better, because it's incredibly cost competitive right now. The second big announcement uh, that uh, Urs will be talking about, or is talking about, is about simplicity. So the current pricing that we, uh, well, <coughs> to, to understand the pricing models of cloud worlds is, is complex. So figuring out things like reserved instances and exactly how, mu how much you're going to pay is a tricky art. So what we're actually implementing now is something called, uh, well, automatic discounts for steady state workloads. So that makes it a lot simpler for you. We check your usage over a monthly period and then apply the price drops right at the end of the month. And so you actually make some massive savings on that as well. So in, in effect, you can save up to about 53% for compute engine instances if you've got 24 by 7 usage. So again, big, uh, big cost savings there. Uh, he's uh, announcing about new operating system support, so we'll have SUSE uh, and Red Hat support, Windows Server 2008 R2, and we're also supporting cloud DNS, and so you can have DNS as a service as well. Uh, and finally, uh, we're also building more on what Mandy was talking about earlier, blurring this distinction between infrastructure as a service and platform as a service. So we're making this much more of a continuum. So uh, in the past, you typically had a sort of sense of compromise. If you wanted the auto-scaling functionality of App Engine, but maybe a language wasn't supported on it, you might have to go towards Compute Engine, but you wouldn't have the auto-scale with it. But now with this hybrid model with managed VMs, which is now in production, uh, you can go beyond that traditional compromise. And you can run whatever you want, auto-scale it as well on App Engine uh, with, uh, with this managed VM model. And so 
summarizing all of that, because there's quite a lot to take on board there, I guess you can take away that we're pretty committed to cloud, uh, and that's pretty important to us. Second, we're committed to simplicity. Um, we want to make it easier to understand the cloud, easier to be built about that, and easier to be able to predict things. And third, we're, we're rethinking the way cloud computing can be done with this hybrid model. So ultimately, all of this should save you time and money and effort. Uh, so um, lots to talk about there and lots to take in there. Um, but uh, the other thing to mention as well is we're going to be running a, uh, a cloud roadshow. So there are going to be 27 uh, locations globally. Um, and uh, there's one in London, one in Manchester, uh, various uh, events in the Nordics, uh, Italy, and so on. Um, so have a look at this uh, URL here, scan it later, and, uh, and uh, explore that further. Because um, the Cloud Roadshow is going to be where you can learn a lot more about what we're doing in cloud and whether that makes sense for you and how it makes sense for you. Um, so uh, you, can get, you can get a next level of details and get much more of an unpacking of these uh, cloud announcements than I've been able to do justice to here. Um, so, you know, closing words, really. Um, a, a few impressions. I mean, looking at Dan's, uh, or listening to Dan's talk, there was a lot to take on board there. There was uh, the social graph, multiplayer for iOS and Android, um, increasing people's ratings, um, you know, the Unity support. But ultimately, when I was looking at a lot of those pieces that come together, it's about engagement. And so how do you create a much more engaging experience with your players? to really build loyalty, build your, uh, your, your game up, and build your following and ultimately revenue. And uh, Games Play Services has clearly got a pretty critical role to do there. On the analytics side, uh, again, engagement is, is, is another running theme. How do you make sure you understand exactly what your games developers, are do your, your uh, customers are doing? Um, and actually, it ties in quite neatly to one of the things that came up on the panel. Because actually, work starts after you launch a game now. And that's really where analytics fits in quite nicely as well, beginning to study exactly where it is that you can retain your, your users, retain them, grow them, and, and create the optimal game experience. And so hopefully, I think you've got some good sense of, of, of where we go from there. Um, and on the subject of the panel, one thing I kind of took away from it, uh, even though it sounded like a kind of a pessimistic title, was this is actually the best time to be a game maker ever. And, uh, and I think that kind of comes through uh, consistently from pretty much all of the talks that we've heard. We're in a really exciting time. We're just getting started in a way. It's been lots of experience, but lots of the pieces are coming together now to, to really be quite transformative. And uh, that's, that's going to be good to see. With YouTube, we learned a lot more about growing your audience and engagement. And uh, Kai's talk uh, on uh, on their experiences of growing rapidly and uh, scaling very quickly, I think show about that sort of sense of the opportunity that there is out there for us uh, as an industry and for games developers in particular to go massive. And uh, understanding that going massive is great, but being prepared for it uh, and having the right infrastructure behind you is also a pretty important piece as well. So. Uh, that was a, an excellent talk, uh, talk there. Um, and Cunate, uh, with, with AdMob, talking about all of these different ways that you can monetize, uh, lots new an, of, of new announcements like the uh, in-app purchase ad formats, you know, having analytics and AdMob integrated together, ad network management, uh, the app developer business kit, all of this driving towards an increased revenue, which, uh, which is valuable. And then we move on to, to Ade's talk with growing with Google. And, for me, that was about demonstrating we have a much more joined up Google. Um, this is not just about social a social network. It's about the identity layer across Google and where identity is important to you, understanding your users. So it's about reach. It's about discovery. It's about acquisition. It's about personalization. It's about retention. And it's about the power of recommendation to bring new people to your game, to make it stickier and make it more effective. Um, and then, of course, you know, with, with Noah's talk on the future of gaming, I mean, that's incredibly thought-provoking. And uh, I, I think we all feel that uh, there's, there's, it's, it's such an exciting space, and there's so, so far that we still got to go. It's, uh, it's a nice place to be. So the last thing to say is thank you all very much, particularly our speakers uh, and the events team, 
uh, and uh, Rich for doing a great job emceeing, and, and, and mostly to you for making this such a fantastic day. Thank you.